My name's Jeff Regan. I get ten a day in expenses from a detective bureau run by a guy named Anthony J. Lyon. They call me the Lion's Eye. With Jack Webb as Jeff Regan, investigators stand by for hard-boiled action and mystery and thrilling adventure in tonight's story of The Lady with No Name. The next time you're out for a drive, pick up Olive Street along about the 700 block. You can't miss it. It's a big building made out of white granite. The Cosmopolitan Building. The man who built it is doing a long run up at San Quentin for draft. Anthony J. Lyon, the guy I work for, rents an office in that building. International Detective Bureau, Suite 308. A couple of rooms with a connecting wastebasket. The Lion has the only desk in the office and a typewriter that Remington dropped from their catalog back in 1915. Well, I walked in last Tuesday at 10 a.m. The office was full of taboo. She was a tall girl, very pretty, wearing slacks and a coat that must have set the mink population back 20 years. But she still looked cold, like she'd never get warm again. The Lion had one arm around her shoulders... He knew by this time that coat was the real article. There wasn't any music, but he didn't seem to mind. Come in. Not much room to dance. We got trouble. She's your date. This is one of my operators, Mr. Regan. How do you do, Mr. Regan? Now, tell him exactly what you just told me. Yes. It's all right. May I sit down? I feel strange. Of course. Come here. Thank you. Get this, Regan. I don't know where I live. I don't know my name. Yeah. I want you to find out who I am. You heard that, Regan? Heard what? It's a verbal contract. She just hired us. Oh, you're out of your mind. And you're a witness in case anything comes up. Please. Please, I I don't feel well. I'm perfectly willing to pay you. You'll just find out who I am. Well, look, lady, there's a cop on every corner. I couldn't go to the place. You got here. Quit pushing her. This is our case. I was afraid. I found this in my purse. Mm -hmm. 32 caliber, Smith & Wesson. Been fired. There's three gone. What are you doing with that, miss? I don't know. It's just been used by you. I don't know. Well, where'd you get it? I just found it in my purse. Remind you of anything? Uh, no. You take it. Now, look, miss, I know you don't feel well, but there are certain questions you'll have to answer. I just want you to find out who I am. It's terrible this way. It's... Uh-oh. Painted. Yeah, you always had a way with women. Help me bring her around so she can sign that contract. She hasn't got a name, remember? We'll give her a name. Jane Doe's good enough. I guess so. What do you mean? She's dead. The lion just stood there. He looked sad, like a water buffalo caught in a drought. Well, when she rolled onto the floor, her purse went with her. It cracked open and the stuff inside spilled out on the rug. There wasn't anything to tell us who she was. No comb, no makeup. Nothing but a house key and a receipt for a cab ride dated that day. There wasn't even a label in that mink coat. Nothing to go on. I might as well have tried to walk to Catalina. I told the lion to phone the coroner's office, and I hopped over to the cab company. They told me that the receipt came from meter 212, driven by a man named Servi. He worked the call box at Hollywood and Western. He was a little guy. I figured he got the job because they ran out of big uniforms. They double-crossed him on that cap. If it wasn't for his ears, he'd have been wearing a snood. Uh, uh, sorry, bud. I got a fare. Where is he? Under the floorboards? I got a fare. Yeah, you said that. Where? Uh, in there, eating. If your flag's up. I'll pull it down. Happy? You, Johnny Serby? Whose nose are you? They told me I'd find Serby in this hack. Who told you that? cab company. They don't know any more than you do. Now, look, uh, never mind the Nick, jokes. Just give me the straight out. lines. Nix, will you? Cut out this company uniform. Well, they're going to get it back if you don't open up. Get it out. All right. Louise pulled out three weeks ago. She took all the furniture with her. You can collect from her. I'm not the finance company. No? Here. Oh, private people, huh? Well, who's getting con? 
Did you carry a brunette in a mink coat sometime this morning? Maybe. Where'd you drop her? Downtown, six and grand. Where'd she live? Ask her. I'm cruising in from the fair. Where'd you pick her up? In Burbank, Hollywood Way, and Kensington. The fair's in Pomona. You took the long way. I like to drive. It's company gas. Yeah. She was nice, real nice. You know what I mean? Real class. Okay. Ah, oh, wait a minute, will you? Yeah. We didn't go anywhere, but time's up. That's five even. Fast meter. Hey, you want me to tell you about the guy? What guy? Tall, dark haired, uh, brown sport coat, movie type. Go on. He was chasing her when she caught my cab. He looked like a match. Was it? Ask him. Is that all? She got in, we drove away. Right here. Thanks. No tip? Like you said, we didn't go anywhere. <laughs> Ever have somebody drop a key in your lap and say, go find a door? Well, I drove out to Burbank and I began looking around for a good lock near Hollywood Way in Kensington. I figured that key I'd found in Jane Doe's purse would have to fit something. I made my letter on the 10th house. There was a for sale sign on it. I didn't see anybody around, so I unlocked the door and it went in. Outside of something that smelled like tar and kerosene, the place was empty. I was just about to turn around and leave when a brown sport coat slid into the room. Movie type. When he walked over to me, I knew he drank the right kind of scotch. Gonna use your GI loan? Just looking. Gotta buy it. It's a steal. No, the lady won't like it. Your wife? Girl in a mink coat. You make that kind of dough? She got it from somebody else. You Hollywood guys. Where'd you get the key? I borrowed it. She won't need it. What's your name? I didn't have a chance to ask her. Oh, you're kind of slow, aren't you? Sometimes. We'll see how fast you can hit the door. No, I just got here. Yeah, now you're leaving. Cab driver says he knows you. I'm friendly. I talk to everybody. Said you were doing a chase scene. Could be. He was pretty. They all look good in mink. It's not the house. What do you want? Well, we could start with a name. It's Dameron. Not enough. That's all you get, wise punk. Now beat it. You'll give more at homicide. I don't see any bad. Now, look, we can play games some other time. A cab driver put the finger on you as the last man to see that girl in mink. You talk like she's dead. You call it. Too bad. There's a lot of fur coats in L.A. and a lot of guys chasing them. You got nothing. That's what they always say downtown, but you'll talk. I don't figure on leaving, but you're going on your way right now. Better open a window, Dameron. You're sweating. Keep talking, sunshine, or we'll make one in that far wall. You got help in the back room? Quit scratching around. It doesn't mean anything to you. It didn't before she pulled a fade in my office, but it does now. Out by a new carpet. I don't know who let you out, but it's bedtime. You've been talking about a dead girl who doesn't even know her name. Now go back and finish your dream. You got all the questions. Now let's fill in the answers. I'm fresh out of box taps. There's a door you... No, not yet. I'm going to get what I came for. Little man, that's a promise. <laughs> You're out of condition, Dameron. You're in a great position to throw that line. Oh, you got talent, mister, but it's still raw. Come here. <laughs> now, come on, get up. I'm not through. That's where you're wrong. It's a big luger. Makes the same size hole. All right, punk, you got a name? A lot of them for you. Oh. School isn't out yet. Just answer. It's Regan. Okay, Regan, let this sink in. Forget you ever saw any dame in a mink coat. Forget you ever saw me. That won't be hard. Look, Junior, you just lost the round. Now, remember what I told you. Have a memory lapse. Is that clear? You made your point. Now, blow. You always use a Luger? You're close, Wirt. Well, then that 32 doesn't fit. What 32? The one that the girl was carrying. You got it? No, I gave it a homicide. Good, good. It saves me a trip downtown. You're not worried? No, I'm very happy. Huh? Today's my birthday. That's the reason you're walking out of here. The whole thing looked as phony as an undertaker in a white derby. Well, I went back to the office and the lion was sitting there with a bottle of beer and a sandwich that looked like a couple of end tables. He stopped chewing when I came in. What's her name? It's still Jane Doe. You've been gone four hours. Movie? They don't open till noon. All right, where you been? A vacant house in Burbank. I trailed it up from that cab receipt. What'd you find? A guy named Dameron. What'd he say? Nothing. Shy? Tough. That way you got the egg on your chin? 
I was nervous. When you gonna learn to be nice to people? He had a gun, too. Tell me more. That's all. Yeah. I like this. It's got possibility. All right, take off your saddle. The race is over. When the coroner's boy showed up, they told me why she dropped. That's easy. She died. It's poison. Without an autopsy? Something about her color. It isn't official, but we can work on it. Suicide? Murder. Why murder? They feed themselves iodine and sleeping pills, but they don't take aliseed. What's that? A hot drug with a petrol base. It burns. Homicidal handler. Sure, homicidal handler. Only we got things to do. We got a stake in this. You made her the client. We're going to give her service, dead or alive. What does Wendetti say? I don't pay Wendetti. We find out who she is. All right, you try. Her picture shows up in the paper. She drops dead in our office. How's it make us look? They sent in the first string when she died. You'll clear this up before homicide does. They'll lift your license. We won't need it. What do you mean? I still got Exhibit A. What? Smith and Wesson, 32 caliber. You're withholding evidence. I forgot to give it to them. All right, now give them a call and tell them. That was five hours ago. You make the call. All right, I'll tell homicide. They'll give me a break. That's what Dillinger thought. Give me the gun. They've got Jane Doe's prints on the wire. They'll have the answer in ten hours. Cut that in half, Regan, and we've won the championship. You'll have to give the cup back. You cheated. When I left the lion, he looked happy, like a guy who just figured the mystery melody. I had the gun with three bullets gone that Jane Doe had been carrying in her purse, the lion in back of me, the police department in front. That left me about as much chance as a blue peanut on a wedding cake. I knew that if I walked into homicide with that thirty-two, they'd hold on to me like a season pass. I had to find out who it was registered to, so I gambled and I went down to the city hall. I went in the Temple Street entrance, room 11, personnel division. If I pegged it right, I could get the dope on that gun without getting involved. I figured wrong. Can I help you? You in charge here? Lunchtime, yeah. All right, whose name matches these numbers? Small arms? Yeah. What authority? I just bought it. Want to know if it's clean? Yeah. Caliber and make? It's a 32, Smith and Wesson. Okay. Smith and Wesson, huh? 32, 32, 32. Yeah, right here. Got the weapon with you? No, why? No rule. No gun, no vital. I got it. Here. Okay. Purchased August 1929, factory reblue job 1931. Owned by American Trust and Loan. Permitted to Dale W. Curtis. Thanks. I'll have to ask you to wait. Why? No rule. Got to run them all through ballistics. Anything special? Maybe. Found a guy floating around Silver Lake this morning, full of 32s. Who? Working on it. Have to ask you to wait. No, I can't. I haven't had lunch yet. Stick around. We may invite you. I don't like your food. Oh, don't worry. You can have anything you want the last day. You are listening to the story of the lady with no name. Tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, investigator. If you are a graduate registered nurse, please listen carefully to this important message. 29,000 nurses are needed to join the new Army Nurse Corps Officers Reserve. If you're a registered graduate nurse between the ages of 21 and 45, drop a card for complete information to the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. And now, back to the story of the lady with no name and Jeff Regan, the investigator. There it was. The clerk took Jane Doe's gun and closed the door marked ballistic. I figured he couldn't be too sure about whether that thirty-two would match up, but I didn't want to wait around to find out. He left the vitals card on the counter. I spun it around and I got the address of Dale W. Curtis. It turned out to be a one-story frame that stood in the way of the new freeway they're building. The movers were just jacking it up and I caught the last carload of people leaving. They told me that Curtis hadn't lived there for seven years. They did give a number over on Manzanita off Fountain, where I might be able to find him. It was an apartment on the second floor. From the looks of the place, it figured that the OPA had a fight on their hands. I rang the bell and waited. I don't know whether it was the lighting effect in that dim hallway, but when she opened that door, I expected to see those thousand ships slide down the ways again. She was a... Wearing some kind of a filmy thing that made a spider's web look like burlap. She had a voice that stole over you like a pint of Irish ale. I didn't expect you until tonight. I broke my watch. Come on in. I'll see if I can fix it. 
I'm great for the swift movement. Yeah, it shows. My name's Marlo Curtis. I want to see your husband. He's not here. Do you expect him? No. Where is he? Up north. Business trip? Yeah. He sold out. Oh, what kind of business? Ask the warden. Huh? The El Curtis is in the prison cemetery. Been there five years. Sorry. Don't say it. He deserved it. You're going to drown in those tears. I'm still burning. The right color, wrong occasion. Soda? What? Your drink. How do you want it? Well, you're mixing. Hey. Now, isn't that better? I don't know. It's my first drink. You'll get another. The weather's changed. No, not in here. You're quick. Must have a good straight man. Yeah, you. You get top billing. What's your name? Regan. Detective. Maybe. Arrest me. Sergeant. I'm due for a promotion. You'd make a better lieutenant. Come here. If I had anything to do with you, the captain. Yeah, sure, until you snag your colonel. You're nasty, too. Did I pay for my drink? Get out. Tell me about this nail file. You got that out of my purse. I had one hand free. You two-bit shadow artist. Now get out. Hello? Yes, he's here. Yeah? Uh, This you, Regan? Uh, You don't know me. I've been lucky so far. They should never have taken that gun down to the city hall. You get around. You shouldn't be up there in Marlowe's apartment. You gonna run my life? Now, I told you what you shouldn't do. Here's what you're gonna do. Look, Buster, don't crowd me. You're gonna forget all about today. A girl forgot a lot of things today and she dropped dead. Got the idea? Suppose I don't buy it. You want a partner for that gun? Dameron give you the nickel? You gave me a dime. I got one more call to make to the city hall. All right. Suppose I lay off. I got something for my piggy back. You're no petty girl. Hang it up and get out. You know, Regan... I could have really liked you. Yeah, well, that's why I'm scared. Well, you can see how things were. I felt like a short girl with a new look. No matter how I tried to break it down, I figured to cop the leading role. A Jane Doe walks in her office and drops dead. She has a gun that probably talked to a couple of people. A cab ride receipt takes me to Bill Dameron, a guy with a talkative gun. I end up in Marlo Curtis' apartment for a lot of punctuation marks. Everybody talks but the people. Well, I knew I'd have to begin to move before homicide tagged me, so I hopped down to the Times and I checked the morgue file. I pulled the clips on Dale W. Curtis. Marlowe didn't lie. He was dead. The old papers didn't mean anything, but the banner headline on the night final put one piece of the jigsaw in position. I told about a treasury department agent named Shields. I found him in Silver Lake. He'd been shot three times with a thirty-two. Now I knew where Marlowe's nail file fit. I started to leave when I caught the last paragraph. It said... Unidentified man turns in the murder weapon. Police are seeking his whereabouts. Yeah. This is Lyon. I've been calling your place for two hours. I just got home. Gonna give yourself up? It was your idea. Who's Jane Doe? I don't know. Why? You got a badge, you try. Look, Regan. You're hot. Every prowl car in town's looking for you. Yeah. You better start filling this in or they're gonna get you. Now listen, big shot, you're in this too. Not from where I sit. I gave you the gun. Now send me some dough over here. I don't have enough for your pay. I need some money for cab fare. No petty cash in the office. Don't lie to me. What about that money you got out of Jane Doe's purse? What do you mean? She could have never got up there without cab money. Well, she must have lost it in the elevator. Look, I haven't got time to play games. Now send it over. How much do you need? Ten bucks won't break you. Where you going to, Yuma? I'll expect it in an hour. Goodbye. Hello. Hello, Dameron. Always like your door. I wouldn't stop you. You'd crawl under. Come on in, fellas. It's drafty out there in the hall. You got a parade permit? Rodney, say hello to Regan. I already did on the phone. What about Slim? Hi, you broken. His name's Regan, isn't it, Big Mouth? Oh! I was sitting right next to Rodney when he made that call to you. It was perfectly clear to me. It wasn't clear to you, Big Mouth. Oh. Rodney told you to lay out, but you just had to get down to that newspaper, didn't you, Big Mouth? Oh. Rodney, Slim. Slim on the bed. All right, my go. 
Oh, Regan, once more, they got a gun downtown. They got a dame and her prints are going to fit it. They got a stiff and that gun's going to fit him, okay? And I'll lay you off. Uh, you said that before. Rodney Slim, hold his hands. Now, Regan, I know you understand me. I said all the right words. Maybe my punctuation's bad. Lay off. <coughs> Period. Lay off. <coughs> Period. All right, leave him in the bed. He's on the floor. That's fine. Now he won't have to change his bedding. Dameron was good. When I got up, my face looked like a relief map of Death Valley. He was wearing a signet ring. He left out all the water holes, but the mountain ranges were rising fast. I figured I was safe now. That guy in the personnel office had never recognized me. Well, I was standing in the kitchen giving myself the cold water treatment when somebody knocked. I figured that was a switch, so I opened the door. It was that hacky, Johnny Servey. He had an envelope in his hand. Yeah? Hi. Remember me? You give up cab work? Oh, I found this under your door. Here. Thanks. Football? What do you want? Well, you asked me about a dame in a mink coat today. Now, I'm asking you. I don't run a meter. Well, I figure all this might help. All of what? Well, I get to thinking about it, see? And then I think some more. All right, come on. Get to the point, will you? You played a hand. Now I'm playing a hand. Go on. Well, dames mean trouble. And mink coats, they mean double trouble. Yeah? Is it worth five if I remember another guy? Maybe. Well, he's all over the papers now. I've seen him. Who? Shields, the guy they fished out of Silver Lake. Where? He was out in Burbank this morning, early. I thought you were at Pomona. I was, I was, but... Well, I guess I wasn't exactly cruising. I, I got a friend who's out that way. Know what I mean? When was this? An hour before I pick her up. This guy they find in Silver Lake is walking around that house. I'm looking for a store for oh, breakfast. All right, you eat. Well, that's it. After breakfast, I hop in my cab, and that's when I pick up the dame at Mink. Why'd you bring me all this? Oh, I figure we got somewhere this time. Now do I get my tip? I gave him his five bucks, and he left. Then I opened the envelope he'd handed me. It was the money that I'd asked the lion to send over. Two five-dollar bills. Well, I looked at it, put it back in the envelope, stuck it in my pocket. So far, all I could see that I got out of this thing was a good beating from Dameron. The question still stood, who was Jane Doe? Well, I knew my next move. I wanted to hop over to the Treasury Department and see if my two matched their two, and maybe between us we could come up with four. I didn't have much to go on. It was just a hunch. I took Marlowe's nail file with me, and I walked in the front door of the federal building. I showed my license to the chief agent. That's right, one of our agents, Shields. They have the murder weapon down at Homicide. I know. All we want is the man that pulled the trigger. Well, I got an idea. I'll listen. What's wrong with these $5 bills? You can't spend them. I figured that. Where'd you get them? How bad are they? Lousy paper, rotten ink, terrible engraving job. You could do better with a rubber stamp outfit. Where'd you get them? Any of these been floated? We picked up a few. Were Shields working on it? That's as much as I can give you. Now, where'd you get them? Well, the girl faded out in our office this morning. She was carrying them? Yeah. What's her name? That's what I gotta find out. Uh, Jane Doe, huh? Well, that's what we called her. So there's a paper, hmm? Same girl? Yeah, that's her. Any identification? Not yet. They've been running a picture for hours. Well, I'm short on time. You're the guy. Wait a minute before you hit that button. Yeah? Your addition's good, but you haven't got all the figures. You don't make book on that. You're the number one boy with me. You think I'd solo in here? You might. No, no. I got an ace. All right, so you keep your nails clean. Now look at it. It's a nail file. They cut dum-dums out of shields. Told you. A second story apartment with a deep voice. How did you know? You're holding the file that cut the grooves. You use it? I can give you the guy who did. Dum Dum makes a big hole. Half shields. Move the tip of a 32 slug, it'll spread from here to Kansas when it hits. You can do it with a nail file. Maybe. Where's that apartment? No, I'm too close to quit now. I can't let you go alone. I got a big car. Well, before we go, mister, if no one belongs to that file, you belong to the gun. In that case, I'll have a lot of time to do my nails. Well, it was a long shot, but that's all I had. The agent just sat there on the way over. He didn't say a word. Well, I figured he didn't believe me, but it was a short drive to find out. We hit Manzanita Street just after the dinnertime rush. It was quiet, and everybody was eating or they'd gone out for the evening. 
We climbed the stairs to Marlo Curtis' apartment. I told the agent I wanted to go in alone. He didn't like the idea, but I explained to him that I expected friends and somebody should cover me from the outside. Oh, she looked even prettier than I remembered her. One tear was just about ready to take that last plunge across her cheek. What do you want? I brought you a paper. I've seen it. You know the girl? Yes. What's her name? Too late. For you, maybe. I gotta know. You wouldn't understand. Try me. You're still looking for things. No, not this trip. You didn't think I could cry, did you? No. I learned. Weeping over a nail file? I said you wouldn't understand. It split a slug in a treasury agent. I don't know. Well, I do, sis. You filed the grooves. Shows you how many times you can be wrong in one day, Regan. Kind of cramped behind that screen, Dameron? Small apartment. Yeah. Always wanted to get the girls a bigger one, but Marlo's getting tried. You're wrong, Dameron. Not anymore. You've been around Regan too long, Marlo. Now you got a mouth just like his. Big. I just figured out what he's been trying to do. You putting brains on the market, too? The Jane Doe he's been looking for was Evelyn. Your sister could have been a rich woman. Not with the kind of money you printed. What are you playing this scene for? I didn't count on murder. Evelyn forgot things. You killed her. It was no good. She couldn't tell the fives from the ten. I'm going to identify her. You know where that leaves me? Sure I do. And I'm going now. You'll have to walk through this Luger. Is that the same gun he used on the Treasury agent? You and Regan hardly got acquainted, didn't he tell you? Your sister did that for me. You lied. Ask Regan. Nail file. That's right. Dumb dumbs. Evelyn wanted to be sure. You're rotten. Now get out of my way. Milo, don't try it. I'm going out that door. Not standing up. It was a real photo finish. Just as Dameron pulled the trigger, the agent kicked the door open and threw a couple of fast ones into him. I'd call it a dead heat, but you'd have to give the agent the edge. His first slug cut Dameron down like a blade of grass. I figured the second was for shields. Marlowe wasn't in a hurry anymore. Bacon. I'll call the doctor. Don't bother. My phone's too big now. You're hurt, baby. Yeah. I got bigger. I almost made it. It was a good try. I was desperate. It's all used up. Good. Regan. You think I'm as bad as him? No, baby. You just played on the wrong team. He was... Let's go. Yeah. From here on, it's a monologue. Well, it was hard to figure. It was like trying to throw a saddle on a porpoise. I gave what I had to homicide, and it unbuttoned something like this. The girl who pulled a quick exit in the office, Jane Doe, was Marlowe's sister, Evelyn. She was front man for Dameron's bad money. She helped him pass it. The treasury agent, Shields, got a little too close, so Evelyn pumped a couple of dum-dums into him. She did it for Dameron, and then he slipped her the poison. He figured this stuff would work better, but she lived long enough to take that taxi ride to the office. Well, it didn't begin to make sense until I got down to personnel. I didn't think to check it before, but when I handed the clerk that gun, I noticed the tip of the slugs were grooved. Then over at Marlowe's, I picked up that nail file. It was full of lead filing. From there on, it was a fast reel. Dameron filled in the rest in the fight with Marlowe. Yeah, well, too bad about Marlowe. We might have had something. That's what I don't like about this business. You can't build friendships. Jack Webb is featured as Jeff Regan with Herb Butterfield as Anthony J. Lyon. It's CBS at the same time next week for more hard-boiled action and mystery with Jeff Regan, Investigator. Written by E. Jack Newman, produced by Sterling Tracy. The role of Bill Dameron was played by Charles McGraw. Yvonne Patey was Marlo Curtis. Marvin Miller was the Treasury agent. David Ellis, Stacey Harris, Lou Krugman, and Bernice Barrett supported. Original music for this program is by Dick Arant. Bob Stevenson speaking. Jeff Regan Investigator is heard every Saturday over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.